How's it going guys? I'm Charles. I'm with Addicted Fishing. Today I'm going to show you guys how to use a triple spin glow setup to catch sockeye on the Columbia River. Alright, so today what I'm using to plunk for these sockeye out here and also summer steelhead, I'm using my Akuma Guide Select Classic. It's rated 1530 it's a 10 foot 6 rod it's a little bit on the heavy side but not just over heavy to where you're using just a big pole to catch these fish they're not very big so it's not very fun i like to use as light a rod as possible and so that's what i'm running here got 30 pound braid and we're running these little size 6 spin gloves i'm going to show you how to rig these up the first thing you need to do in this setup is a tie a triple swivel to your main line all right, the second thing that I'm gonna do after I tied that swivel is I'm gonna tie up a leader. The first thing I'm gonna do is grab a hook. Today I'm using these beak bait hooks by Mustad. They're two aught hooks. I just started using this these season and they've been holding up really well. I've been catching a lot of fish, so I'm sticking to them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab off some line. The leader line that we're using is 30 pound mono. Everybody has their preference in line. You can use whatever you feel comfortable in peel off just enough to tie this hook up. So I got some of that line. I'm gonna take this hook, I'm gonna hold it like this, with the point down. I'm gonna feed the line through the eye, just enough to where I can pinch it. It's key to pinch this right here. You're gonna to wanna to hold on to this as much as you can, because if you let it slip, you can ruin your whole knot and you're gonna to have to start all over again. So now that I have that pinch there, I'm gonna start wrapping it. This is just a normal egg loop knot. Wrap it about four or five times after I've wrapped it. Now I'm gonna use this finger right here and my thumb to pinch that line again. I'm gonna run it out to the end and I'm gonna put it back through the eye, through the opposite way. So now that I've put it through the opposite way, I'm gonna pinch all this together. This is crucial, you gotta pinch it all together. I'm going to take the second tab here, the one that I've already wrapped around the shank, and I'm going to start wrapping again, about another five times or so. I think there's too much science to it. Now I've done that, I'm going to pinch it again. I keep everything tight, and I'm going to start pulling this through. The tighter you keep this, the nicer your knot will come out. So now it's coming down, I'm going to pinch it right here, I'm going to switch hands. So now it's like this. And as I feed it through, now I'm gonna grab the other side, and cinch it tight. And now we have the knot that we need. And the reason why we tied this knot is so that when we go to put on our bait, we can push this, and that's why they call it the bait loop knot. And that can help secure our bait. For now, we need a couple beads. I prefer to use eight millimeter, six millimeter, usually six millimeter is my go-to and I always use red. You guys can play with different colors. It's all a preference. Maybe you'll get a little combo dialed in, but I just use red ones. So then I'm gonna start feeding those onto my main line. And I like to use three of them. Three is enough just to get enough separation from your hook This size six spin glow. What I'll show you about getting the separation there, right here. He's there. Someone come get him. Come here. Now we have a fish on right now, so Sean's gonna go over there and check it out. Bring it, bring it, bring it. Hurry, go, 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 go. Walk back, ladies. Walk back, ladies. Walk back, ladies. There we go. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Not a boy. Not a boy, Layton. And that setup Charles was just showing you guys is exactly what transpired right here. Now Charles has got to finish showing you guys how to use that. All right, now this is what I was talking about with the separation there is where I got those six millimeter beads on there, not enough to weigh this thing down too much, but enough to get that spin glow away from that hook where we're gonna have our bait. Now that I've got all that done, I like to personally, because there's a lot of seaweed out here, I like to use a smaller, little four millimeter red bead. And that helps guard from little bits of seaweed and stuff getting down your line and gives you a little bit more time of fishing out there. 
just sits on those beads just like that. It's down there, it's spinning. So now that I've got this all tied up, now I need to tie this to the other end of my triple swivel. My, my personally, my leader link that I usually use, whether I'm casting or running lines with the triple, is I usually do about from the center of my chest all the way out to an arm's width. Cook this, make sure to set your line to the side so you're not leaving line all over the place. So now that I've done that, you wanna be careful on which side that you actually tie your leader to. This thing's actually more like a, like a T. So off of the side is the one that you want your lure to go to. This is gonna create either a drop bled for a weight for just a single casting, or it's gonna continue our setup. Got it. I just do simple knots. I've been doing these ones since I was a kid. I never have an issue. I wrap it around about six, seven times, let it down. Just put it back through the loop, just like so. Pull it tight. I clip that little end off. You don't want any of these little tabs on there. You wanna clip those little tabs, make sure your knot cinch tight so you don't clip it and then pull it and it pulls your knot out. But make sure that you got your knot tight and then you clip all those little tabs off so that you don't get tangles. Those little tabs can cause you chaos. Now that I have this set up right here, I have my main line to the top of that triple swivel, my leader that's about an arm's length out from my chest, off the side, four millimeter bead, spin glow with three six millimeter beads and a two watt mustad hook. Now that I got all this tied up right here at this triple swivel, off of the other end that we haven't tied anything to yet, the bottom of it, now either you can run a foot off of this to a lead to, for a casting rig if you only wanted to cast, or what we're doing is I'm gonna replicate a, the exact same setup on some other triple swivels, but I'm gonna separate them about three to four to five or so feet apart. You gotta judge it depending on how shallow you're fishing. So here, I happen to already have a few tied up. As you can see, same thing, triple swivel. Leads down to another triple swivel with another spin glow. You just keep replicating it. So what I did was I took another piece of leader line that was about four feet long, and I'm gonna tie that to this end of the swivel. This is a very basic setup. It's really easy to do and it's very effective. All right, so now I'm gonna run you guys through this one more time. Triple swivel, main line, triple swivel. Spin glow down here. I'm gonna go more 30 pound test to another triple swivel, which goes to another spin glow. And then once again, you just replicate that another four to five feet to another triple swivel another spin glow. Now that I've got all that done, it leaves me with one extra end. And on that end is where your dropper is gonna go. And your dropper is your weight. I like to run a foot or so in most places, but like today we had to adjust it. We were going a couple feet on the dropper, so if you're not getting bit, that's something to, to look into adjusting. How am I supposed to do a yes. tutorial like this? <laughs> no. Okay. Alright, boys. Alright. Yeah, baby! Kiss him up. Alright, let's get back to what we were talking about after I just caught that beautiful fish. We have the very end of our swivel system here. It's left open. That's where our lead's gonna go. I like to use anywhere between 8 to sometimes up to 16, 20 ounces depending on the current. I try to go as light as possible. I don't want to go over with the weight, but if you're just getting blowing down river, start up in the lead. They come in eights, tens, they're pyramids. This is what you want for the sand. Get a variety of them, because you never know when you're going to need to change them. So what I'm going to do now, 
Let's tie this line on, and I like to do it about two foot. You can experiment with this. Today we had to go with a little bit longer dropper line, so you want to just experiment with that. If you're not catching fish, change the dropper lead. So all I'm going to do is tie this the same way I did before. Really simple knot. I'm using 30 pound tests. Pull through, and that's it. Now you don't always have to use lead. There's some guys out there that like to use a breakaway system. They use rocks, they use sandbags. It's something that you can look into. I like to use lead as long as I'm not getting snagged up. If I'm not getting snagged up, and the reason being is that if I happen to drop out there and I think I'm too far with lead, I can slowly reel in a couple cranks every you know, 10, 15 minutes or half hour and put myself into a different spot. With the breakaway system, what happens is when you pull on this, on whatever you're using for lead, it snaps off and you lose whatever you're using for lead or your weight and you're done. So with this, I can reel in and adjust where I'm at and maybe put myself in that lane with some fish. So the final step to the setup is actually putting bait on your hook. So what you wanna do is take a coon shrimp. I like the small ones, there's some bigger ones. Today I'm using millennial coon shrimps. They look amazing. What I'll tell you about the bigger ones, as you can see, it's a lot bigger shrimp. I don't like to use these for sockeye. I like the smaller baits to match my smaller spin glow. So what I'm gonna actually do is take my hook, I'm gonna put it right through its back very carefully and push it up the shank. And then with that bait loop knot that we tied, I'm gonna pull the loop out. I'm gonna gently put it over that coon shrimp's tail and then pull it snug. After you do that, what you have is an amazing sockeye killing machine. Now that I have all that baited up, I have a great friend out here, Cameron Black, in my kayak. He's gonna run my line out. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is loosen up my drag. Loosen up my drag and turn on my clicker so that I don't get a bird's nest, so that when I'm out here helping him out, I don't have to worry about my reel. So I'm gonna do without getting tangled up. And I grab my lead. Get all my spin wheels laid out. And then I'm gonna hand my lead to my buddy. As he's going out, I'm gonna get back over to my rod. Now today I'm using my Akuma Coldwater SS. It has line counter, which I'm gonna use this line counter to judge where I'm at in the river. And once you find fish, this is crucial because once you find fish, you can just repeat the exact same thing that you did over and over and continue to catch fish. So I'm gonna watch him, he's going out. All right, there you go, get start going up river. Now he has to start going up river because there's current. So he's gonna have to get above my rod holder so that when he drops my lead, my line slides over and locks up right in front of my, my rod holder. That should be good. Okay, All right, let's keep tension on it. Let it drop. Turn off my clicker. Pull it back to my rod holder here. And what I like to do is I slowly start pulling in until I get that. Make sure I get all that belly out of there so there's no belly so all my lures are out there nice and straight. After that's done. Just put a bell. Bells are always a great thing to add to your setup so that you know when you're getting a bite because these things can be really finicky. Bite, 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 and gone. And I want to know when I'm getting a bite. All right, guys, let me know how you guys like this tutorial. Put in the comments what you guys think about it. Hopefully it helps you guys become more successful at catching sockeye in the Columbia River. Make sure you like this and share it.